So in case you missed it, Ableton Live 12.2 is now in beta and it is filled with so many new features. But the one that caught my eye immediately was the updates to Meld. So Meld came out with Live 12 and it's probably the most feature rich synth in Ableton Live. And it now has a new oscillator simply titled Chord. And as its name implies, this oscillator generates a chord for every note played. Now what I want to explain to you in this video is how this new chord oscillator works, what chords it's generating, and I'm going to show you how to apply it practically in your own productions. But first, I've got something cool that I want to give you that's going to help you make the most of this new oscillator. So the first thing that I set out to do when exploring this new oscillator on Meld was to figure out exactly what chord shapes it can generate. And that took a while and a lot of bouncing to audio to figure out, but I figured it out. As soon as I did figure it out, I went ahead and I set up some racks with variations saved for each chord so that I didn't have to guess when producing. And I've uploaded both of these racks to my website for free so that you can grab them and you don't have to guess when using this new chord oscillator either. Both versions are identical. However, one of them names each chord shape in scale degree in case you maybe aren't the best with music theory. And the other one then just lists conventional chord names. I'm not listing chord quality like major or minor because it's scale aware, something we will also talk about later. But before we dive in, I wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to go and grab those as it's going to make exploring this device so much easier for you for the rest of this video. So let me explain to you what this new chord oscillator does. So I have an instance of meld here with just oscillator A set up. I then have this MIDI clip with just a C3. If I hit play, we hear just a C3 as a sine wave because that is what the stock default meld basic shapes does for you. Now, if I select the drop down menu to choose my oscillator type, at the very bottom is our new chord oscillator type. Now, when I select that and hit play, we hear a full chord of sawtooth waves. Now, chord is generating four sawtooth voices for every note played. Now, where it becomes interesting is when we take into account the two macro controls for this oscillator. The first one is shape, and this changes the chord that is being played. So this C remains as the root, but all of the upper voices in the chord are changing every single time. Additionally, the second macro allows you to control the inversion, meaning the order in which the notes of the chords are arranged. Now the second macro controls the inversion, which the inversion is just the order in which the notes of the chord are stacked. And the cool thing is that these macros will both work in real time, meaning that you can revoice that chord on the fly even during the same note. The same thing is true with the inversion. Now what makes this oscillator so useful is that it is scale aware. So I have a C major scale here, and if I were to just hit play by default, Everything is a major chord. But if I go over here to the upper right corner of Meld and select Use Current Scale, which is set to C major, the chord that's being generated from the additional voices of the oscillator will be tuned to the appropriate notes for this scale. And this is true regardless of the shape being used. And the inversion, of course, will also follow the scale. But then that kind of leaves one lingering question, which is what are the chords being used by that first macro? 
So as far as I can tell, there are 13 chord shapes available with this oscillator. And I worked it out actually using another feature of Live 12.2. So in case you're curious how I did it, I took an instance of Meld and I automated the position of that shape macro on the chord oscillator and lingered at every point that I heard a new chord voicing. Then from there, I pulled up the context menu and I selected bounce to new track, which is a new feature in 12.2. And then from there, I took that bounced audio and I converted harmony to new MIDI track. And that gave me the 13 chord voicings that you see here. These voicings remain consistent regardless of the quality of the chord, meaning that if it is a minor chord, we are still using all the same scale degrees. They are just going to be scale aware. For example, the second chord here is a C major seventh chord, which is C, E, G, and B. However, if the scale was set to minor, this would be C, E flat, G, B flat. So the scale degrees remain the same, but the quality of the notes are scale dependent. So then from there, I went back to that very first meld that I was working in, and I went ahead and set up a macro that then has each of these chord positions locked down on a variation so that the guesswork is gone and it becomes a little bit less of a black box. And now that this is set up and all the guesswork is taken out of it, it becomes really easy to take just four notes and work out a very, very cool chord progression like this. That would take so much longer to write out in MIDI than it would using this. So let's talk about how you can practically apply the chord oscillator in your productions. I think the most obvious application is to generate chord stabs. So I've got a UK garage style bassline and drum groove here. And I went ahead and I copied the baseline over onto Meld, but using the scale aware function, I now have a really amazing chord stab. And I'm doing something really neat here that I want to point out to you. So I have both oscillators activated and set to the chord oscillator. But for oscillator B, if you'll notice down here, I have it shifted up to scale degrees. And so what that means is that it's actually generating a four note chord starting on the third scale degree relative to the note that is being played. So meaning if I hit a C, this second oscillator is actually generating a chord starting on E. Now the cool thing is that because it's scale aware, then that just means that we can use this scale degree shifting to build more complex chords. So really, from just a single note, I am generating a scale aware ninth chord every single time because this first oscillator is generating the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. And then this second oscillator is generating an instance of the third, the fifth, the seventh, and it's adding that ninth. And because I can invert the second oscillator separately, I can create a much larger open voiced chord as a result. So let's listen to just oscillator A on its own. and then oscillator B on its own. And note, if I shifted scale degrees on this, it would change the chord. If I go to five scale degrees, completely different. So you can do a little math to stack more complex but scale aware chords. And you can then of course use the shape control to change the exact voicing and type of chord that's being played. But when we combine the two then, especially with that panning, it creates this really large chord, which once again, we have just sequenced, 
a single note. So hopefully you can see now why I'm so excited about this oscillator being in MELD. Thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned at the start of this video, you can grab my MELD chord shape cheat sheet preset rack free from my website. You'll get both the version that lists the variation in chord name and the variation in scale degrees. I hope that you'll subscribe, like, and leave a comment, and let me know what new features in Live 12.2 you would like me to go over with you. I'm excited to dive more into this beta in the weeks ahead. Till next time.